Hello Eastview Scholars and welcome to this tutorial video on the metric system. This is the system of measurement that we use in not just in chemistry but in science. Um, we don't, you might be used to gallons and, and uh, uh, pounds and ounces and inches and things like that but it's not a very accurate system and so the metric system is with liters and grams and meters um, and let's look at why okay and here's the basic why number one it's just your normal base 10 math this is stuff that you are used to using okay this is the math you've grown up on with decimals and when we look at converting from one number to the other you'll find that it's a lot easier it's much more accurate um, well-known fact the foot was measured off a king's foot. When the king died, the next king would measure his foot. They would change the measurement. Whereas the metric system basically goes by tens, so you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, keeping all these numbers in your head like 12 inches are in a foot and three feet are in a yard and six yards makes a cul-de-sac. I don't know. And it's easier to use. Yes, there is mathematical conversions to do, but as I'm going to show you in a minute, besides the ease of not having all these different types of measurements like ounces and cups and gallons and pints and stuff to worry about, you can almost think of it as a decimal dance, a decimal jump in converting the numbers. So you, you in a sense, you're doing the same thing without actually running a math formula. Okay. So let's look at it. Here's part of the reason it's easy. First of all, there's one basic unit for measurement, as you can see right here. For mass, it's grams. For volumes, it's liters. And for distance, it's meters. So here in mass, you might be used to pounds and ounces and things along that line, we don't, and tons. We don't have to worry about that. In volume, you know, pints and half gallons and gallons, it's just liters in metric and in distance, inches, and yards, and feet, and miles, and lions, and tigers, and bears. But here we only have to worry about meters. The second thing besides just having one basic unit is that then it has prefixes. And let me skip to the chart here. There are prefixes there that then tell you how large or small the value is. Okay? If you came to this country from another country and didn't know that yards were bigger than feet and acres were bigger than yards and miles were bigger than yards and, and stuff like that, you get very confused. But in the metric system, everything here starts at the base unit, which is right here. 10 to the 0, which if you remember exponents, 10 to the 0 is the number 1. Okay. Now this chart only says meters, but this is also true of liters and, uh, and uh, grams. Okay, so all your base units are sitting here. And then how large or small it is is based on a prefix, like kilo. Kilo means a thousand times more. One ten to the third, a thousand. So there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. There's a thousand liters in a kiloliter. There's a thousand grams in a kilogram. If I went to the other end of the spectrum with milli, milli is ten to the minus three or point zero zero one 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 thousandth of so it is one one thousandth of a meter a millimeter or the other way i like to look at it is you can put a thousand millimeters in a meter a thousand milligrams in a gram a thousand uh, milliliters in a liter okay so you're down to two things what am i measuring grams meter liter and what's the prefix how big or small is that number a much easier way to work through this method. So then, as you convert metric numbers, which we're going to do in a minute, it's really just a movement of the decimal. Now, if you look on your periodic table cheat sheet, you have a number line, or you have, it says metric units, it's on the other side of the periodic table, and it gives you not all of these, but some of these. It starts at the base unit, 10 to the 0, and then it has some of the most important things we have. I would, you can turn your sheet sideways, so it emulates this one where the positive exponents go to the left and the negative ones go to the right. Okay. When you're set up there, then your problem of converting, so for example, this number two and a half liters into milliliters, becomes much easier, and I'll show you how. 
So here's what we're starting with. We're starting with uh, two and a half. Sorry, I had a little pen mishap here. There we go. Two and a half liters. Now liters is right here at the base unit. Okay. I want to go to milli, which is right here to the right. Now the base unit is 10 to the 0, or the number 1, and milli is 10 to the minus 3rd, or 1 1,000th. What I see by holding it this way is I'm going to be moving my decimal right. That's the first thing to point out. Whatever direction, from whatever you're starting at to whatever you're ending at, that direction is how I'm moving the decimal. The next question is, how much am I moving it? Well. I'm, that's the difference in the exponent. So I'm starting at um, 10 to the 0, and I'm going to 10 to the minus, oops, third, almost circled the wrong one. 0 to minus 3, that's a 3 uh, decimal jump, so that's just what I'm going to do. Okay, 1, 2, 3. There we go. Fill in placeholder zeros, and what that turns out to be is 2500, sorry, getting the pen got a little goofy, 2500 milliliters. Okay, there's my answer. Now, a couple things to point out. Notice that we went from a larger prefix, or not necessarily a prefix, but we went from the base unit to milli. But we went to the right. If I'm going from farther, if I'm moving right, if I'm going from a higher exponent to a lower exponent, in a sense, with positive and negative, then the decimal is going to move to the right and it's going to give me a larger number. Okay, So it makes sense then, if I think of the patterns we talked about with scientific method, then if perchance I would go from, say, deci to mega, which we're going to do in our next problem, so I'm moving left, then the number should get smaller. Okay. And then again, how many places I move it is all based on the difference in the exponents. So let's go to our next problem, and this is what I told you. We are going to start at deci here, and we are going to move left to mega. Okay. We're going from 10 to the minus 1 to 10 to the 6th. Now, let's get us started here. Sorry. We are at 450. Oops, that's not where I wanted to write. Sorry, got a little carried away. I'm at 450. We're going to have a decimal there. It's going to move towards our left, and it's going to move from minus 1 to 6, or it's going to make 7 moves. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, place my decimal movement there, fill in my placeholder zeros, and what I see is what I started with was 450 decigrams, but what I have now is 0 0.123. Remember I had four placeholder zeros, 450, and that's megagrams, capital M, G. Okay. Went to the left, got smaller. One more problem. There is a math way of doing this, but if you can do this and, and drawing the scoop shows your work, then you should have trouble. Now remember, you won't have any trouble, but you can only do this between metric units. You cannot do this from, say, liters to gallons or grams to pounds. It's only metric to metric. Okay. Here's our next problem. And notice what we're doing. We are going again from deci to mega, but this time it's decimeters to megameters. Okay, so again, we write out our problem. We got 450, and here's where our decimal would be. And again, it's going from deci to mega, so that's seven exponential differences between 10 to the 6 and 10 to the minus 1. And I'm going left, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put down my decimal a zero, oops, my pen's going crazy again, a zero, a zero, a zero. I apologize, it seems to want to do its own thing right now. Okay, 
Anyhow, so let's just stop that as best we can. Anyhow, the point is, let me skip back a slide. The point is, it was 450 decimeters. It's the same as 450 decigrams. What I wanted to show you was, it doesn't matter that whether it's meters or grams, it's going to be the same number. Okay, so if you look at what I moved there again, I had 0 0.1234 four placeholders, 450, and now it was mega meters. And again, going back to the last slide, notice that it doesn't make a difference. It's not that I'm measuring grams or meters or liters or converting them, it's the prefixes that are the most important. So the number is exactly the same as it was in the last one. Okay. Now, as a preview, let me erase this. As a preview of the math we're doing, you can also set this up mathematically using their exponents. This is called dimensional analysis or factor label method. I'll just do it quickly as an example, and then that'll be the subject of our next video anyhow, but let me show you. So here's what I know I have. I start with what I know, which is 450 decimeters. Okay. Sorry about that, M. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that number by some conversion fraction that relates decimeters to megameters. Well, this is what it tells me here. This is why um, I can look here, and it tells me that if I take the larger of the prefixes, mega, okay, and let me get down here, one megameter is, what was our difference? 10 to the 6th to minus 1 was 7, or 10 to the 7th decimeters in 1 megameter. Now, it's just like multiplying fractions. Let's take this whole number, make it a fraction. And why it's called factor label is I can see that decimeters cancels, and then it becomes 450 times 1, which is 450. And then that's over the 10 to the 7th times 1, which is 10 to the 7th, which if I do that math on my calculator, comes out to be the answer that I have been um, showing in the last two problems. I'll write it down here. 0 0.00. .00. Zero, zero, four, five, zero. Pen crazy again. Okay, but that's the idea. That math method was the same as that. It was just not moving the decimal. Anyhow, hopefully that just gives you a basic idea of metric conversions, and you're able to do it. Until then, work on your packet, ask questions in class, and scholar up.